Right, uh, check this out. I've got a cool little demo going on here. I know for me, when I set up my first rig, I did it all myself. So DIY, battery install, uh, DC to DC charger, all that sort of thing. So uh, the big thing for me was knowing how much or what size cable to run. So it's cheaper and it's easier, obviously, to pull thinner cable through. But what's it going to do to the amount of amperage you actually get out of your DC to DC charger? So lucky enough to have the boys here from Enerdrive for over at Fraser. And we've rigged up this little test, right? So uh, it's hooked up to a 200 amp hour VTEC. I've got a uh, 40 amp DC DC charger from Enerdrive, and we've got three different cable runs. So we've got 10 meters of cable. I've got a 6 mil, a 10 mil, and a 16 mil, all with good quality connections. So and some plugs. Now I'm just going to show you what the actual voltage drop is. We've got it connected directly to the battery on Dave's old Hilux over here, and I'll show you the voltage drop and how much amperage you get to the DC to DC when we change over through the different leads. So at the moment, that's the six mil uh, twin core cable coming in. At idle, if you have a look here on the charger, it's only getting 23.4 amps. If you ramp that up, Dave, so Dave's gonna idle up there and it'll go up. So we're getting about 28.9 amps, right? And that's out of six mil cable. So this is a 40 amp plus charger. It can punch out up to 50 amps if you want. So I'll switch this over and we'll run it onto the 10 mil cable. Get the sand out. Plug that one in. Now with these units, it takes a few seconds. So once you change, or once it picks up the power source, it'll have to run through its little program before it starts charging. So, so there you go. So with the 10 mil cable, it's nearly 32 amps just at idles. So we'll switch again. We'll run the big cable, the 16 mil. Now this unit here, the e-power. DC to DC, it's actually capable of punching out 50 amps. So with this big cable, we should get well above 40 amps by the time it kicks in. And uh, that's 16 mil cable we got plugged in now. So you can go even bigger if you want, but you'll see here when we punch out well over 40 amps, it's probably about as big as you need to go for a good 10 meter run, which most people will do from their car to their caravan. So there we go. So at idle, it's nearly, there we go. Look at that, 38 amps just at idle. 36, Dave will ramp it up, and we're gonna go well over 40, I'd say, just by going up in cable size. So look at that, high idle, 42 and a half amps. How was that? So there's the difference. So it could be a bit confusing in your head to understand voltage drop just because of cable size, but when you've got 10 meters of cable, uh, I don't know what it is per meter, but you, you lose that voltage to this unit, which means you, you lose the output and amperage to your battery, which means that's gonna take longer to charge up, and uh, it's not gonna run your fridge as well. So cable up the best you can, uh, make sure you get the most voltage you can to this unit, and it'll perform the best and charge your battery the best. So I uh, hope this helps you out. I know it helps me out, talking to these guys, getting a bit of info. Um, be good for you and your DIY on installs. Uh, you'll know what cable to buy and uh, what gear to use. Cheers, eh? Any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll get back to you.